We see Jesus now heading for Jerusalem. He knows what's coming and that he goes willingly. John's account here of Christ coming there and stopping, as it were, a week before the Passover was to start. He stopped to see Lazarus, his friend, and to have dinner with him. And you notice what happens. All of these people come out to see you, but they don't just come to see Jesus. They come to see somebody who was raised from the dead. Now, I have to admit that were I around and I knew that there was somebody who was going to be somewhere I could go and see them that had been raised from the dead after being dead for four days, I'd probably want to go to. That would be a novelty. Uh, oftentimes we hear or think about uh, people having near-death experiences or people that have been revived from the dead, as it were, by paramedics and others. And this is a marvelous thing to be able to do. But stop and think a minute. Lazarus had been dead for four days. Now, medical science is saying that not only was it impossible, but that you wouldn't want to. After about five or six minutes, most people are brain dead. After four days, the body was beginning to rot. So the raising of Lazarus was no small thing. The sadness of this whole thing is that the chief priests, the people who are in charge, those people who should most be glorifying God over a marvelous, unbelievable miracle like this, what do they want to do? They want to destroy the miracle so people won't see it. They want to kill Lazarus as well as Christ. Both the miracle Folks, that's not unlike what a lot of people would like to do with the church today. You'll note that time and time and time again we have heard about the separation of church and state. There is absolutely no such thing in the Constitution of the United States. This is something that has been forced and has been used to try to close out one particular religion. That's Christianity. The world will not stop, folks. Just like the chief priest of Christ today, the world today would love to kill the miracle. And that miracle still lives today. Every time somebody finds their way to Christ. If you don't think it's a miracle, then you've never been reborn to actually yourself. The transformation that happens, folks, is nothing you can... I've never been able to find words to describe. It's just marvelous. You suddenly feel totally different about virtually everything. This is the kind of miracle we're still offering. And that the world would still like to kill. Why? Because it can't duplicate. The only person that can create that miracle is God. And He does it for one reason, folks. Because He loves us. He wants us to have life and more abundantly. And that, that may seem a hard thing to hear or believe today in a, in a world whose economy has gone totally bad. And we have huge numbers of people without jobs. Uh, I noticed a statistic the other day. Almost a million people every two months lose their home foreclosure lose something that they had counted. The world is seeming to act just totally beyond our reason. Well, folks, the one thing we should be able to always depend on, and
and trust Him is Christ. There's one of those kind of concepts here, folks, that just, just, I don't, and, and I guess it's because I have found it. I don't understand how somebody would turn down, in a world like today, the ability to have peace in their heart. Because, see, the world can't offer that peace. Only Christ can. The world can't offer ability to lay down at night, close your eyes, and go to sleep without worry. Christ can. And if you're still worried about stuff, give it to God, folks. That's the point. He says, give me your burdens. Take mine on you. His is a simple one. It says, trust me and believe and quit worrying. And you see people and you can look at the look on their face. And you know they don't have that. They haven't found it. And the sad part is many people have quit searching for it. When it's right there all the time. We see here an act that is Marvelous. Mary, one of Lazarus' sisters, has saved up and bought this special box of perfume. It's one of the spices that they use to anoint the body for burial. But she takes it and she washes Christ's feet with it and dries his feet with her hair as an act of of symbolic love and as an acknowledgement of who he is, that he is her Savior. And just as we would probably find immediately in this world, and sadly enough, too often we find it in the church, what's the first thing somebody complains about? Lord, look at how much money she just wasted. It was about money back then too, wasn't it? Look who's the one that did it. John says he didn't do it because he really cared for the poor. Because he took that much money out that he might have spent. And that's even sad. But the, the very fact that this is an act by somebody acknowledging and glorifying Christ. Of all people who should have recognized it, it should have been what? His apostles. The twelve. But it's one of them, and I'm sure he wasn't the only one thinking it. He's just the only one to speak up. 